Hello everyone, my name is Christian Sawyer. I'm an undergraduate student at Brigham Young University, Idaho, and I'm going to be doing a presentation of my research. Uh, I've titled it An Analysis of the Evolution and Speciation of the Lynx. Here is a uh, summary of the abstract of my research paper. Um, I'm going to quickly move on to my thesis here, um, and I'll read it for you. This uh, explains what my research is about. Uh, the Lynxus uterensis, quite different from lynxes of today, is believed to be the ancestral species of lynxes and to have become extinct in the last glacial period, first arising, rising approximately 5.0 million years ago, and quickly diversifying from Africa. This ancestral species has left us with four extant species, three of which, the lynx lynx, lynx pardinus, and lynx rufus, are uh, direct descendants of Lynx isidorensis, while Lynx lynx is believed to have given rise to the fourth extant species, Lynx canadensis. Moving on, we're going to talk about the Lynx isidorensis, also known as the Isfar lynx. Um, the uh, Lynx isidorensis, believed to be the ancestor of the Lynx genus, has been known by many different names. Some taxonomists consider it or have considered it to be a subgenus of the Felis genus. For this reason, one of the synonymous names with Lynx Isidorensis is Felis Isidorensis. Although it was originally thought that the Lynx Isidorensis was a member of the Felis genus when discovered by Crozet and Jobert in 1828, most taxonomists now consider Lynxes to be a part of their own separate genus. The Iswar Lynx differs from other extant species of Lynxes, including the Eurasian Lynx. The skull of the Iswar lynx appears to be larger, narrower, and slightly less vaulted than that of the Eurasian lynx. These features, along with sturdy zygomatic arches, suggest that the Iswar lynx had a more powerful jaw than its descendants. As we can see here in the figure on the right, those bottom two jaws um, are much larger than its descendant, um, one of its descendants, the lynx lynx. It is also believed that the Iswar lynx traveled from Africa throughout nor the Northern Hemisphere, um, giving rise to the uh, different extant species of lynx, as explained in my thesis. Um, currently, no academic sources are available to give explanation of the specific cause of, or causes of extinction of this ancestor. However, speculation of some sources explains that the ancestor species became extinct during the last glacial period. Moving on, the lynx lynx, also known as the Eurasian lynx, uh, is believed to be the most widespread species of lynx in the world, ranging from southeast China all the way to northwest Sweden, hence the name Eurasian lynx. Evidence shows that the speciation of the lynx lynx came about when the lynx Isidorensis traveled from Africa to Europe. Uh, the Eurasian lynx differs from its ancestor in size and dental features. I stated earlier, the Eurasian lynx is smaller than its ancestor and other felines, which is typical of lynxes, along with sharper teeth and smaller paws. Uh, however, the Eurasian lynx is known to be the largest of extant lynx species. The Eurasian lynx most likely inherited its larger body size relative to other extant species from its ancestor so that the species could maintain uh, body temperature in its colder climates through a higher surface area to volume ratio. I will now talk about the lynx pardinus, also known as the Iberian lynx. Uh, it's given this name because it's found uh, within the Iberian Peninsula of Southwest Europe, uh, covering what we uh, now know as Spain and Portugal. Uh, speciation for this species is believed to have begun uh, approximately 1.6 million years ago due to isolation during one or several glacial periods. However, fossils show that speciation um, is more likely to have occurred uh, 1 million years ago instead of 1.6 million years ago more recently. Um, it's most likely to have diverged from sister attacks on the Eurasian lynx as well. Uh, morphological and genetic differences are very minute. Um, however, the length and color of fur differs from um, its closest uh, relative, the Eurasian lynx. As we see here in the picture, um, the spottage and uh, color of the coat of fur is quite darker than the Eurasian lynx, as well as uh, we see this uh, beard along the face of the lynx. Um, however, little to no research uh, 
is available to explain the significance or advantages of uh, features such as the uh, beard. Uh, next, we'll, we'll talk about the lynx rufus, also commonly known as the bobcats. Uh, the bobcats are incredibly widespread and common th among North America. Evidence shows that the lynx rufus came about due to dispersal of lynx populations approximately 2.6 million years ago, most likely through the land bridge connecting present-day Russia and Alaska. The bobcat's habitat, including its 12 subspecies, range from southern Canada, covering the entirety of the United States, going as far south as mid to south Mexico. The bobcats have experienced interesting forces of evolution among their own subspecies, with glacial ice in areas of high evolution being a possible cause of isolation in areas of the western United States. They are an interesting species for evolutionary scientists to study due to their large geographic range and lack of physical barriers to inhibit gene flow, which is believed to lead to a genetically pan, um, panmictic population. The varying subspecies of bobcat are believed to come about due to the varying climates of the North America, American region. For example, regions such as Florida are very different from other colder regions such as north to uh, midwest United States. These different subspecies vary mostly in their size and dental features, but data is lacking in regard to comprehensive genetic studies to best understand the evolutionary forces working to differentiate these subspecies of a bobcat. See here, uh, this uh, figure here on the right shows those the different ranges of those different subspecies of bobcat. Uh, out of the extant species of lynx, the bobcat is the smallest in terms of skull size. Uh, similar to other extant species of lynx and in differentiation from lynx isiodorensis, they are generally considered to be medium-sized cats. Analysis of fossil records shows that size reduction of lynx rufus came about during the Holocene epoch. The bobcat is also known to be the only lynx that exhibits melanism. As stated previously, there is a lack of studies that show why the lynx rufus differentiates from its ancestor lynx isiodorensis as a result of evolutionary processes. Finally, we will talk about the lynx canadensis, also known as the Canada lynx. A speciation of lynx canadensis came about when lynx lynx, also known as the Eurasian lynx, uh, migrated from Eastern Asia to North America. As is the case with uh, the bobcat, it most likely uh, it is most likely that populations of the Eurasian lynx came to North America and gave rise to the Canada lynx via an Alaska-Russia land bridge. The Canada lynx is the most commonly found feedline in Canada and Alaska. Their population dynamics are closely related, related to that of their most common prey, the snowshoe hare. As is common in predator-prey relationships, the decline in the size of the prey population soon leads to a decline in the size of the uh, predator population. This decline in population size of Canada lynx often brings about reproductive failure, increased natural mortality, and increased rates of dispersal. And some studies have recorded that dispersal has uh, taken distances of over a thousand kilometers. Dispersal events such as these might be a primary evolutionary force that promotes isolation and colonization, leading to genetic drift of Canada lynx populations. Uh, data from studies show that the lynx canadensis is fairly genetically homogeneous, but this may change as the species is still considered to be relatively young. Uh, there may, there, I mean, I'm sorry, there have been studies that have observed hybrid, hybridization between the lynx canadensis and lynx rufus, though the percentage of genetic introgression is low at approximately 0.24%. Observations have led scientists to believe that these hybrids are fertile, but as is the case with most hybridizations, cases of hybridization between the two lynx species is believed to show decreased genetic fitness among offspring. Scientists hypothesize that hybridization among bobcats and Canada lynxes will uh, increase in occurrence if climate warming continues to occur and causes bobcats to migrate northward. In conclusion, uh, my main points here are that the extant species and subspecies of lynxes are quite diverse and they cover a large geographic region covering nearly all the northern hemisphere, as I've explained. Uh, current studies seem to be focusing greatly on understanding molecular genetics within the various uh, species, um, and much research has been done in regards to the ecology 
Um, however, there is, is more research that can be done on origins and evolutionary forces on the various species of lynx. I hope that future analysis of the fossil record may allow for a better understanding of evolutionary advantages of morphological features also, um, and uh, approximately give us a better understanding of uh, when these uh, events of speciation took place.